Today we'll talk about feedback. Negative feedback. How basically a closed loop system works under uh, the influence of negative feedback. So we'll talk about understanding. How naturally a negative feedback works. So understanding negative feedback in closed loop systems. Understanding negative feedback in closed loop systems. It can be a closed loop control system or it can be a closed loop amplifier system. Okay? To keep it simple, let us take an amplifier with a gain of for example around 10 and a closed loop it's open loop amplifier with a gain of 10 and we make it closed loop by offering a summing point and they put to the summing point we label by V in that is added and then we take the feedback signal from the output through the feedback factor beta let me take this beta equal to for example 0.4 so I have selected a simple closed loop amplifier sector to understand the principles of negative feedback in a closed loop system an amplifier of gain 10 a feedback element of gain 0.4 we call this by open loop gain A naught we call this by the factor B. Okay? The output signal coming from this closed loop amplifier is going to be B. Okay? And the signal coming from the feedback is going to be called as Pf. And then the difference, it's a negative feedback, so it's negative. So the B in minus Bf coming as the difference between the input voltage and feedback voltage. So what is basically a feedback? A part of output voltage fed back to the input side for mixing and then the difference is available as the input signal to the amplifier that is getting amplified by the factor A0. Under any condition V0 will be equal to A0 into B. Under any condition Vf will be equal to beta times V0. Okay, that's a principle. So anyway, we are not going through the theory. Instead, we are going to play like how naturally the closed loop systems are working without knowing the negative feedback here. Okay, we'll see how the negative feedback system is going to bring its steady state in its loop. Okay, we'll find out what is the output voltage under steady state, what is the feedback signal under steady state, and then we also find out what is the difference under steady state. Okay, we we'll go around this loop. Okay. A simple example or to understand the influence of negative feedback in a closed loop structure. Okay? So do not worry about the variables. Let me erase them. So we'll, because the system never knows. Okay? The system is working under influence of negative feedback. Let me assign some input signal. Say the input signal is equal to for example 2. Let me fix my input signal. It's a DC signal to be 2 volt. I want to amplify this DC signal by using a closed loop amplifier system having an open loop gain of 10 and having a feedback factor of 0 0.4. Okay, so instead of waiting for the closed loop gain, what is the overall V0 with respect to Vn? We wanted to understand the negative feedback and appreciate the negative feedback through this example. That's a plan. So it's a basically a continuous system. So any system beginning from rest always begins with the zero initial condition. So let me assign V0 equal to zero. Okay, so the amplifier initially producing, the amplifier is initially producing only zero. Okay, so by sensing the zero volt, the feedback system producing a potential of zero is the input because this is V0. So since V0 is zero volt, into point 0.4 the feedback signal is also going to be zero. So the negative feedback senses the feedback signal which is only 0 volt now and then compares to the input signal and creates a difference between the two. What is the difference? 2 minus 0. So this is going to be 2 volts. So it produces 2 volts. Correct? This is what happens at time t equal to 0 for example when the output is initially at 0 volt. Okay? So now the input generated 
the input generated to the amplifier is 2 volt. Therefore, the amplifier senses 2 volt. The gain is 10. It has to produce. It has to produce 20 volts. So the output is 20 volts. What it means? It doesn't mean that the amplifier output will jump instantly from 0 volt to 20 volt. In section is coming from the negative feedback, you increase the output from 0 volt to 20 volt. That's how the negative feedback increases its output of the amplifier. That's how natural negative feedback works. When the output is equal to 0, the negative feedback creates a difference of 2 volt and instructing the amplifier to increase its output from 0 volt to but since it is a continuous system which cannot rise quickly from 0 to 20 instead it can go in steps so for something like that 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt then it can reach finally 20 volts ok so there are many samples in between so let me assume after some time the section coming from negative feedback is to raise the output from 0 to 20 so let me assume after some time the output raises to 2 volts after some time after some time, the output raises to 2 volt. Then by sensing this 2 volt, so this is initially what? 0. So then it responded with 0. Now what is V naught? 2 volt. Therefore it is responding with 2 into 0 0.4. How much? 0 0.8 volt. So the feedback signal produced by this negative feedback is 0 0.8. That is compared again against 2 volt. So 2 minus 0 0.8 is a new difference. How much? 2 minus 0.8 is going to be 1.2 volt. 1.2 volt into 10 will produce. So by sensing this improvement in the output, we know it is 2 volt and the negative feedback generates a difference of 1.2 and asking the amplifier to increase its output from 2 volt to 10 into 1.2. What is that? 12. So now the instruction coming from negative feedback is yes. You are increasing from 0 to 2, that's good. But instead of going to 20, better you go now to 12. That's a new instruction coming from negative feedback. So still the instruction is negative feedback. It's example if uh, raise its output from 2 to 12. And then it starts increasing it further. After some time, assume it reaches 5. After some time, assume we not reaches 5 volt. Then if we not equal to 5 volts, what's the feedback? 5 into beta. How much? How much? 2 volts. Okay. 5 into 5 into 0.4 which is equal to 2 volt. So now the problem is set for an interesting analysis. Why? This is 2 volt and this is also 2 volt. What is the difference? 0. The difference is equal to 0. So input to the amplifier is 0 volt. What will be the output of the amplifier? What is the output of the amplifier? Input is 0 means output must be zero therefore the output is delivered to zero so the interesting analysis okay let me feedback amplifier okay once the output of the amplifier sector is fine no instead of asking it to increase it is asking it to decrease why because the 5 volt is not actually possible we took a wrong sample of 5 volt that's why the negative feedback is instructing the amplifier to decrease the output from 5 to that means 5 is not the steady state, even 2 is not the steady state. When we took 2, it is increasing to 12. When we took 5, it is decreasing it to 0. Sometimes naturally negative feedback increases the output, sometimes decreases the output. So the instruction is now to decrease. So let us decrease the output. After some time, assume the output decreases to 4. What is the V naught now? V naught equal to 4. If we not equal to 4 volts, what is the feedback signal? What is the feedback signal? 4 into 0.4, how much? 1.6 volts. So this is 1.6 volts. This is 2. 2 minus 1.6. 2 minus 1.6, how much? 0.4 volts. 0.4 into 10. 0.4 into 10. What is that? 4 only. That is already there. What does it mean? So it is actually instructing the output to go from 4 to 4. What it mean? V naught to already you reach your steady state, already you have attained your steady state, V naught to change your output. The moment output takes 4 volt and then output is 4, output is 4, what's the feedback? 1.6, what's the difference? 0.4 multiplied by 10, that 
that's it. That's your work. Steady state condition. That's how negative negative feedback naturally works. At steady state, it brings out good to four volt exactly. Whereas the feedback signal settles at one point six volt. Whereas the difference exactly settles to point four. Because under any condition, V naught should follow A naught into V D. It is nothing but it's ten into what? Point four. That's why V naught settles at four volt to bring this balance. Whereas V of R V is equal to what? Beta times V naught. Beta equal to point four. Correct? Into V naught. So it is always equal to one point six. That's how naturally a negative feedback brings. The output to the output of it goes to the amplifiers to steady state and brings the feedback to the steady state and also the difference to the steady state. A simple way to understand how negative feedback works. That's what even given by the well appreciated negative feedback theory under steady state condition. V naught by V n is nothing but A naught by one plus A naught V naught. That's for the well appreciated. Negative feedback theory. What is A naught? Ten. What is A naught beta for this loop? A naught is ten. Beta is point four. What is that? Four. Therefore, one plus four. What is the gain? What is the gain? That is a closed loop gain of this closed loop amplifier. Therefore, B naught equal to what? Two times B n. So B naught is equal to four. That's the theory. And this is the Practical thing happening in negative feedback amplifier. Okay. Similarly, we have one more theory. That is, V D by V N under any condition. How V D? How V D takes as a function of V N. V D by V N. One more transform function for this close to that is one by one plus A naught beta. Since A naught beta already known how much? Four. What is that? One by five. That's a connection. So V D is One by fifth of your V N. What is V N? Two volts. One by fifth of two volts. Two by five. That's your V D under steady state. How much? Point four. Two divided by five. So this is all in one steady state conditions. That's how naturally the negative feedback works. Enough. Understood.